you talked about how we could decentralize the electricity grid. I read it and it seemed like common sense. So could you sort of just talk about that a bit? The, the whole model of centralized power doesn't really make sense as much as it probably should. Um, it tends to break down once you realize if we have any way of generating power locally uh, within the actual, at the place, at the consumer's uh, location, then that model sort of just, it just disappears. It becomes very difficult to justify it. In your book, you actually outlined a system uh, or, or a scenario where we've got sort of, you know, a village or a small town or a hundred houses and they're actually running a decentralized system. Could you just sort of talk through that picture? Because it's a beautiful picture and it, it's, it made it much clearer for me that there's no sort of loss in this. All there is, is there's a greater efficiency, you know? We start with the assumption that people are using renewable energy. I mean, we're not going to be talking about coal-fired, you know, houses here. Um, we we have a number of those technologies. They're increasing in uh, in efficiency all the time. Uh, the first and most obvious one is solar power. So imagine you've got a house, you've got your solar system, you're running at about, let's say, 90%. Which is, I think we're, we're, I've got friends already who, who are way past that. Which you mean 90%, like I'm producing 90% of the power I need from my solar panels. Yeah, exactly. Right. Um, now people are already way past that. Yeah. But we have to say, for the sake of argument, what we're trying to do here is not suggest that we've got it all sorted out, but yeah. more uh, try and knock down where we can go wrong here. Oh. So if you're producing 90% of your power, what happens is you first, obviously, uh, can sell as people do, um, you can buy power from the grid, and then if you have too much, you can sell power back to the grid. And that, that, that would mean that a small town, you know, 20 houses on a street, roughly speaking, if they're creating 90% all the time and they have some battery uh, system to store that power when they're, when they're creating too much, yeah. then between just 20 houses, you could probably get to a state where you were roughly speaking, you know, surviving on, on that alone. It wouldn't be ideal. What do you um, mean? Because everyone's not using the power at the same time. So. Yeah, they're not all using the power at the same time. The patterns would probably be similar, yeah. but not as similar as people think. People right. do kind of, you know, come and go different times. So, you know, you have that scenario where 10 people or 20 people at 90% can sort of almost take care of each other if they're exchanging power Okay. Uh, up to a point. Now, you've got a couple of problems with that. Number one, you're using the main grid. So by using the main grid, you're going to have to pay overhead on the cost of your electricity. You're not sharing... 100% of your overflow at exactly the same price as it would be. You're giving a cut to the company okay. uh, for, for putting the infrastructure in place to do that. Yeah. Makes it simpler. So begin with. 20 houses and they start balancing out their power. They start um, sharing it, sharing it back. And it's not very efficient. Yeah. Uh, the thing about decentralization is it is really the opposite of centralization. I mean, it's in the name, right? So centralized structures work very well when they're at small scale. They tend to break down, it seems, and we outline it in the book, when when, think, when they get bigger. They break down in terms of what's value for the, the little man or woman on the, on the street. Um, however, decentralized ones don't work very well at small or can work less well at, at small scales okay. and start to really come into their own as they, as they increase in, in capacity. And the reason for that is that more people joining the network, since it's in the favor of every individual, they have more, every individual has more options when more people are there. Okay, yeah rather than the opposite example, yeah. which is, you know, as yeah. more people join, you're creating a crowd, you're yeah. creating like uh, queues and, and like it, it starts to basically cause stress to those systems. Yeah, so in this one, that I guess mean that the more people are in the network using this sort of this mesh, the electrical grid, the more people who are likely to be out when you're in and you need electricity and you can use that. It's a marketplace for electricity. Okay. So the more people participating in a very free market of electricity, the better for everyone. All right. You know, okay. so... Each house is sharing. You get, a, you know, get another street next to it, and you say, "Oh, well, let's just connect and you know the economy. Let's connect the economy." Okay. And then you have forty houses, and there's almost certainly going to be some, you know, ups and downs. And those ups and downs begin to level each other. And out. these guys are sharing directly between themselves. This yeah. is like the forty houses. They use some the sort of agreement or something. Yeah, they would be on an economic. Imagine you could create. You couldn't do this right now because the companies wouldn't let you. But if you could create an economic agreement, a yeah. marketplace between them, yeah. that's what would happen. So then you get forty houses, and and the balance of the when people are using it and when it's now starting to level out because more people are playing the game, yeah, so those, yeah. those numbers are leveling out. So then you you extend to the whole village, and you've got like say 200, 300 houses. You you've got it. If everyone has that system, and this is a, only a problem of. Two things. Number one is how to finance that. Yeah. And number two is uh, how to actually uh, 
be allowed to do that by the companies in existing system because they want to tax all of that. They want to put their fees on all of that. It wouldn't work as it stands out. It would work very, it would be just on the border of working. But uh, as we go further, then you take a village, you take a a town next to it, do the same thing. We start to see that this pattern would work very well. It's right now we've got 200 houses. They've all got, they're all working alike. They've got solar power on the roof. They're all producing about 90% of the electricity they need for themselves. They're taking the other 10% from other people in that 200 houses who are, have stored some of their electricity in a battery and at the moment they're out doing something else. So they're giving it to me. How is that passing? Who's keeping account of how the energy is passing? Like I'm using your electricity, now you can use mine. Do I buy it off you or yeah. do we trade it? Or Well, this is the thing. You've got two networks running there. Okay. One is the electrical grid itself. Yeah. Now, for let's just drop the, the company. And let's put wires between people's houses, yeah, which right. somehow have been financed. So really, you could probably buy the current grid off the uh, the company. If okay. not, then you could, you know, that would take some political right, pressure. So this is a step further. We've, so we've sort of we've got off the grid somehow. We've laid wires or we've bought it off the grid. And we've, 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 that grid is now owned by these 400 people, the two towns. The yeah. town. So you have electricity. You're connected to your neighbor. You're also connected to the people across the street. This is sort of now you're forming a mesh. Yeah, it's a nice word, that one, a mesh. I yeah. Like and the more people, the more meshy that gets, the more secure it gets. Now, there are obviously technologies to allow electricity to be distributed in this manner, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that we might need work on in that department too, but I don't know how much. Um, there's maintenance for those cables. There's all sorts of things. So yeah. we, we start to see an economy forming around this. So you're generating power for the most part. When it overflows, you're selling that power. And that's the second network. That's right. the That would be a distributed, that would be a decentralized marketplace, which anyone can be, you know, join in with. And can we build that sort of a thing now, a decentralized yeah. marketplace? That can be done with what we've got at the moment, oh, our God, current, yeah. that can, oh God, yeah, like it's simple. Yeah, I mean, there are, li- yes. it'd be immature. It but we're be, there in our evolution of technology. Oh, yes, absolutely. We what, what have we not there. got out of this so far in this story? What have we not got? Maybe uh, the mesh of wires, the fact that there's that many connections between houses. and Anyone things. to coordinate this idea and start it happening. That's it. And yeah, to work on how to get past the, the get political uh, support yeah, I yeah, suppose yeah. because yeah, yeah. people are still governed by yeah, yeah. hyper centralized institutions and governments so you know they're the only thing that will be in the way of this and the private companies that co- the corporations are currently own all are yeah, yeah obviously systems. I mean that's a bit of a difficult one isn't it because they they, they obviously have a huge stake in it so yeah. like, okay so we've got that second level we've got that what you call the second network which is we're set a marketplace for the electricity so I can sell to you, you can sell to me. Do we sell for money? Do you like give me five euros for my electricity and I buy it back for three euros? How does that work? Um, okay, and yes. Um, okay. What would happen, but we of course wouldn't be able to use euros. Okay. Um, we would be, again, this is requires uh, decentralized currencies okay. because they're digital, they're safe. You don't have to worry about the ownership of them. You don't have to worry about someone just you know cutting you off or or somebody inflating the price or something like that. You want a true marketplace. Well, unfortunately you have to use cryptos for that. Um, or fortunately. Can we not use just normal currency for this? Could we not just, you know, use, I mean, no, because there's fees, aren't there? So yeah. if we were, if I was trading, giving you 60 cents and you were giving me 40 cents, there'd be fees on that transfer, wouldn't there? Well, we're talking about minuscule yeah, so numbers. Yeah, like microtransactions, hundredths of isn't a it? penny, a hundredth of a penny traveling back and forth every second. And so we wouldn't, on, on, on cryptos, for instance, as I understand it, which is limited, that the microtransactions are possible because there aren't fees in the same way. Is that true or is that rubbish? I don't know. Uh, you're, it's, it's, it's right and it's wrong. Okay. It's, it's up and it's down. We're at the very early stages. Yes, we, we, we have to, I mean, we can obviously assume that we're getting to the point where we will have properly fee currencies that have been scaled, that have proven to scale, proven to work. Uh, we're, we're a few years away from having... Would it need to be that for this system yeah, to work? Yeah, for everything. Okay, it would or, need to be like a fee-less transaction. There's no transaction fees. I can give you 20 cents and the, the, the currency doesn't charge me three cents. There could be... Uh, of course, there can be fees uh, yeah. because there might be a, a model like the minor model or something else or presumably there might be fees even for the actual network itself. Okay. Uh, but they would be, again, minuscule. Rather than taking okay. large fees from okay. small amounts of people, we're taking minuscule fees from lots and lots and lots of okay. things. It's perfectly acceptable. But the ultimate, the ultimate goal would be to have... If I share one kilowatt of power and it costs a euro or something, I don't yeah, know, yeah, I uh, then and if, if 
if I want to buy it back, it still costs a euro. Okay. So I can sell the same power. And you actually start to use your neighbors as a kind of battery, okay. in a sense. Okay. Uh, that's where we're going. It's, it's this idea that there isn't any middleman, middle technology, middle uh, take or middle rent yeah. in any of this. Yeah, I buy directly from you, you buy directly yeah. from me. The, the mesh supports all these connections. And the secondary, that marketplace you're talking about, just facilitates the flow of money. But it's not, yeah. is it designed to make profit? Um, well, it should do. It has to make profit because we don't just have to worry about this. This isn't the whole game. The, okay. the part of the game is to have some way to pay for the infrastructure around you. So okay. uh, towns or villages may have, uh, they make, you can probably do that. You could do that in the individual level or you could do that at the, the level of the village or the town or even the city where a certain amount of the, the market goes towards hiring people to to maintain the infrastructure, which is just engineers, really, a lot of engineers. So what we're dealing with is we don't need, we need a few managers, a few people to organize, yeah. a few people to get the engineers where yeah. they're going, but essentially that very small amount. It's yeah. not like huge departments for sales and marketing and yeah. people making adverts to yeah. sell the pack and yeah. people lobbying politicians yeah. and uh, legal and, and all this kind yeah. of stuff. That's all gone. What we have is what do you need? Well, I need electricity. And for that, I need engineers. So we need engineers to come in and make sure those wires are accurate and make sure everything's working for me and help people fit these uh, systems into their houses. And that requires money. So who technically owns this? I mean, we've got, now we've got an infrastructure, we've got a mesh, there's a town here with 200, another town with 200. Obviously that could be scaled, yeah. but who owns this mesh then? You're talking about like someone's going to hire maintenance people. Who? Who owns it? Who right. Well, um, nobody obviously technically owns it in, in the same way that nobody owns the blockchain. It's just a set of participants. I own my part of it. You own your part of it. Oh. And the idea of it, what it is, 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 is a, it's a protocol that allows you to come together with other people to create something bigger. Okay. But nobody necessarily owns it. Uh, what, what people get confused with is the idea of ownership versus doing stuff ship you know so uh, if you look at a company people often say oh you can't decentralize a company who's going to run it well, what does that have to do with it we're yeah. talking about removing the ownership uh, part we're okay. talking about re changing the agenda from making money to making electricity for instance so somebody can you can have companies that even are centrally owned that work in say just for a village that the village pays to get the job done or even for a city but that's fine it's not going to be for you know the entire nation it would be very unlikely at this level to have one institution that's organizing all this because then everyone has like if you're a small village you have to check with them you've got to call them up and say hey can you do my thing and they don't care yeah. because you know they're trying to they've got too much to do so it would break down to smaller groups and you might have a little company that runs a whole region or a town and but ideally that would even that would be avoided it's a uh, wonderful idea, yeah. really, that you, you have all this technology and it's like a layer, sort of, it's almost like when I picture it, it's like you've got this sort of village and I actually picture quite a simple village, not a sort mm. of ultra modern one. But somehow underneath it, you've got this layer of, of wonderful, kind of very open, transparent technology. If everyone owns it, obviously, we're going to see where all the money's going. You, and, and in the ownership of that, there's this, there's this great feeling that, you know, um, it's not for profit in the same way. So the technology is truly serving all of the people using it in a very new way, in a very kind of exciting way. Like we've really put technology to work now for us, you know, and uh, it's wonderful. Well, that's the whole goal. The whole goal is that we don't, technology isn't our boss, we're its boss. It's a tool. It's just a very fancy, as I said, that thing, very fancy hammer. Um, it, it, yes, exactly. Um, the, the point of it is that the direction of all of our technology has become to serve the needs of a few. Um, and that, you know, again, it's not a judgment. Yeah. That's what we set up, that yeah. they have every right to be there. They, even if they abused the system and bent the laws to get there, they still, what were we gonna do, complain about them? No, we build better systems. This is about engineering, not anarchy. So yeah. a, again, the idea of who, who owns it is an important, who runs it is important. Yeah. And through that, for instance, you could have uh, the, the, the idea of engineers being hired by, hired by the network and how does it do that? Well, the network itself has its own banking system in it. So it's storing profit. It's taking a profit. All the people know how much they're paying in profit. Automatically. Yeah. Right. And you can create a sort of, we have this in the book as corporate 2.0 or corporate 3.0, right. where you create these nets that, um, and the nets really have kind of a management, an, under, uh, an infrastructure a skeleton for management, for managing tasks. And we get together and spend two years as engineers, business people, uh, all sorts of consultants and people with ideas and people who know much more about it than I do we can get together and, and create systems, software systems that will help people do this. So you have, for instance, a list of employees. We, we have a workers network, which a workers net, 
which would allow us to have access to a massive job market. And again, that's another subject for another and, day. Yeah, and so all these Same nets thing. that you're writing, they're yeah. owned by the end users. They're yeah. not owned by you. The market. They are the marketplace. They're just they're marketplace. Just, they're like a, a sort of a tool layer. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing, isn't it? It's the wonderful. same the same way, you know, anyway. Uh, oh. it, it is wonderful. It's a beautiful idea. And that's why it's so easy for us to, quote unquote, sell it to people. Because it's like, you know, it's a no-brainer. Yeah, it's like you're, t- you're taking many of the sort of blockages out and just, uh, and the technology is performing a function directly just to serve yeah. as a sub-layer. It's exactly. Lovely. Rather than it being telling us what to do, we tell it what to do. We design it and we use it. And it's a kind of spring cleaning of the world we've got now. Everything that's not yeah. useful, out. Like, I don't care if my electricity company has fancy adverts that yeah. cost you know millions to produce you know and all this marketing and all this work to get our attention these nets don't need your attention they work and they do their job their job is to get electricity uh, to you to your house so are you saying like eventually that this the network itself so it's a bunch of people i don't know who get together and sort of set it up and um, program it mm-hmm. they, they don't own it they create a decentralized um application of some sort yeah which creates the rules of how this network, which is distributing energy, will run. Protocol, yeah. Who, who votes on how that's set up? Who sort of determines that? Just engineers the most efficient way and people see if they like it or not? Um, well, there's two parts to that. One is who writes the software and who writes the software is people who know what they're doing. Yeah. And then that's, yeah, that, again, is open source so everyone can analyze it. We can be, right. You can really see what's going on. Right. You don't have to worry about us, programmers, saying, you know, is that going good? No. Right. And, and then what happens is it goes into a unit where your meter is. It's replaced by your meter now. Uh, your meter is serving you. So you need you know exactly how much you're selling and how much you're buying, and you have an app on your phone, which is again yours, yeah. connected straight to your meter, nowhere else. It doesn't leave your house. Wow. Your app is showing you per second what you're spending. There's no more mystery about having to have someone come and read a meter. Yeah. There's no more mystery about how much it's costing you. There are special deals yeah. that work out to be like a way of tricking you into feeling comfortable when you shouldn't. Yeah. You just see, oh, I'm spending you know five cents a, a minute here. And you can see it per second and you can see how much comes back and you can decide exactly how much goes in and how much goes out. Engineers can come in and shut down your electricity but because they need to repair something. But that's the reality. I, I don't mind trusting engineers to know what they're doing. Okay. And of course, all of that would be transparent within the net itself, within yeah. the electrical net, the software part, would let you know engineers need to do this, something's going wrong. You know, yeah. that's the sort of thing it helps manage. And that can be constant voting on every single thing, or you yeah. can choose to vote never, leave it on auto. You know, yeah. if the engineers say it's okay, then let them do it. They'll warn me, they'll say defaults, so like, you know, warn people a day before if you need to do something. But again, there are no large scale works like that because it's, you're basically powering your own house. Yeah. What this is, is to supply electricity to uh, at, in and out where you need it or your neighbors need it. Yeah. It doesn't go much further than that. Yeah. We're doing this again. We've moved the model from, we've gone from this and we've, you know, inverted it. So now the power so we're sort of at micro the community level here. We're, we're working at an individual level. The home yeah. is the center of power. Yeah. That's what's generating power. And if you can help your neighbors, you do because it profits you yeah. and it profits them. Everyone's in alignment now. You're sharing. And the sharing benefit, again, like that wonderful idea of community that when, you know, if you're all holding hands, if you're all connected together in your own interests, very selfishly connected together, yeah. then it works out that that helps everyone. So if one guy's going down, the others can pull them back up. For instance, this stops the idea of mass outages of power yeah. because, yeah, how are you going to do it? It's very hard, especially if it's in a grid, like a mesh like system then you've got this mesh. So if one connection goes down, you're feeding off another yeah. part. You're just connected to another part of the mesh and you continue so they can repair things. So it'd be very even unlikely that you would ever have a power outage for a second. First of all, it's coming from your roof and going into your house and this will increase. Uh, people are putting little generators by the side of their house, little hydro generators, which even work in the winter. And I mean, this is the wonderful thing about this is you can look on YouTube, you can see all these different projects that people are doing. They're very, very cheap, very simple. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of skill in, in, in our societies, people who really know what they're doing. It'd be fun to find a way to make that practical, but, but to maybe perhaps get those ideas more attention, get those ideas somehow organized so that we can you know get them to different communities around the world. There are very many different types of solutions for different places that people live. And what about like, is this gonna fit everyone? What about sort of people who just need something different? It's just not gonna work for them at the moment, you know? Well, I mean, at the end of the day, it, you can always rely on the grid and you can always stay there and that model can always exist if it if it has a purpose you see, the thing is if it has a purpose it should remain 
Um, I think what we'll see is as people develop, develop more innovative solutions, uh, again, the renewables, hydro, wind, uh, also this geothermal, there's, there's like lots of different ways of doing this. Um, and as those increase in, in efficiency, as they really will over the next five to 10 years, we'll see that those edge cases narrow down. You can always, of course, have uh, high volume, high high volume requirements like factories and such. So different yeah. solutions. Yeah. We don't have all the answers to these questions, yeah. and there doesn't need to be one answer to all these questions. What we need to do is start building uh, better solutions using the newer technologies that we have, and then understanding now that it it does that relying on central institutions at very large does come with a you know big bag of problems. Yeah. Uh, this is how this is how things work. It doesn't all happen at once, and not it isn't one person's idea. It's many. Uh, yeah. So we need to just get that. We need to capitalize on that. To capitalize on the ingenuity and intelligence of of our species, and uh, I think we'll get there much quicker than people think. This is whenever someone asks me about that because I've been obviously I've read your book and I'm, I've become a little evangelist. You know, rolling around and now my friends are asking me about decentralization. And one of the things I always sort of get stuck on is when I get to this part where I say, "Well, someone's going to create an app, and the app will be decentralized, and then we'll all be using that. And it's just going to be." much more efficient. I understand, you know, the sort of the idea of the, the peer-to-peer nature of it and the, the cutting out of the centralization. But then they always say, well, who's, who's going to own that app? Who's going to write it? And I always sort of, I get stuck on that a little bit. Like, you know, the net, going back to it, you know, the net which sort of sets up how this electricity grid, this power grid is going to run. You know, you said that someone, uh, people write that, engineers and people write that. Now, I, I, I start thinking, well, no, no, only people, everyone wants to make profit. No one's going to do that. But more and more, I actually see people, and you, you know, you're one, you've, I've watched you programming for like all your life and stuff. People who just write programs for the sheer joy of writing something which works well, you know? And is it those sort of people who will initially be creating apps like this? Will they be funded or will it just be... Well, we have initially, yes. But um, you have so many people around the world who, who are already working on this. It is happening. Uh, you, projects, the, the most famous open source project is probably Linux or maybe now Android or whatever. Yeah, open source means what? Um, okay, open source just simply means that we have access to the source code and the source code is just the stuff that, you know, you can read in plain and simple text. Right, so I can just read this and I can see there's nothing hidden in there. There's no weird little secrets and traps. You, you personally can't because you're yeah. not a programmer. Yeah. But, yeah, but you can trust, you can trust uh, wide, wide wide uh, yeah. a community of, of experts who, who will ensure it's very different trusting a wide community yeah. of experts and trusting a, a corporation that's telling you something. and I've noticed that about like if, yeah. you know whenever you get a bunch of people doing the same thing um, there's always the pe- if someone does something and it's great other people point that out like that's amazing you can un- you, you can sort of count on them to point out that it's great but also if there's a problem Oof. you can count on everyone to go you know, you know, I'm, I'm fully aware of how many mistakes I've made. And I've had this wonderful thing called a computer to remind me from day one, the first thing I ever saw a computer tell me was syntax error. And I was like, what the hell? And it's just, you know, you're not getting past the computer, first of all. So there's compiling, taking that source code and making it something that an actual computer reads, which is, you know, effectively just a, a list of binary instructions. Um, but then you have a community outside of that who will look at the source code. The source code is plain text version of that binary. So something that human beings with the uh, necessary skills can read. And that uh, is something that they will look at and, and be very critical of. And so they, they it's should easier be for us to just, So the second something's open source, just really, because even that, even when the, the second I start hearing binary and I hear compiling and all that stuff, yeah. I know what binary is, like one to zero, I know what compiling is. But the second there's too many of these words, <laughs> yeah, don't even know why. Like so, like of course. the the beauty of of this is that there are people like you, all right, who are genuinely interested in engineering something efficient and you to know, make it work exactly. You know work. how to do that from a digital point of view most of the time. Yeah, and when I don't, my community beats the crap exactly out of me or helps me exactly. And there One are there the are, will ha- will there be a lot of people who are able to actually inspect this source code? Are there a lot of people? Will I be able to trust? There are there are lots. So there's loads of people who will be able millions, to source code. millions, and now millions more. Everything I understand about decentralization, the more it goes on, the more it's actually a. F- and this is going to sound a strange thing to say or a hippie thing to say or something, but it's almost like a more organic version of how the digital layer that we all use, that digital tool can evolve. It's sort of, it it seems to work very much in line with people, in line with 
how communities grow in line with uh, the needs of people, uh, not taking a huge percentage out. There's a sort of a, there's something about it which seems to me to be to be very organic. And I think a lot of the, the digital stuff that we've had for the last, well, quite a while has all been like it, it's meant to confuse you. You know, there's a sort yeah. of layer of not understanding what's well, happening. There's a, the reason It's for really that. interesting to watch that. What you're seeing there is that that isn't about engineering. That's about commerce. And that's about a certain group of people making a ton of profit. So engineering is such. If, in fact, every time you work for a company, you're always hit with this, I, this thing where you go in and you've got this great idea and you want to do it a certain way, but they don't want to put the money into that. They don't want to put the money into that. They, won't, they oh, want right. to put the money here because this is what they oh, want. Right. And this. And from the very beginning of any time I ever had to deal with companies, it was straight away. And every programmer, I, I think most programmers who've, who've got a pretty long career and care about engineering and care about how things are done will tell you, yeah, obviously, we break the programs basically to fit the company's agenda. Most of what you see in the world today, most of this disruption is about, you know, is serving a, a handful of people. The real technology we haven't seen yet, it's very hard. When we try, we're trying to do some projects now and just to raise funding for something where you say, no, there's no way you can make money from this because we have... But the second you break the model, if we make this electrical model and then we wire in the bit where you somebody gets the profit, yeah. then at that point, we have to start changing lots of things, yes. lots of subtle things. And that changes everything. Small changes in large networks change everything. It's got a ripple of, you know, that butterfly effect thing. Well, it's yeah. just huge in engineering. So if you change something in the, in the idea of the network model, the, the, the graph, the way everything interacts with it, you put that one thing in, it's like a a disease that spreads. And then suddenly this network, let's not call it a disease, it just changes its alignment to something else. Something that maybe isn't as isn't at all in line with the human beings or the, the consumers are more in line with whoever's paying for it to be done. It must be quite a nice thing though for programmers, the, the people who are gonna work on decentralization to, to kind of finally get a, a shot at making a system which is really designed as, as just a tool. Like a sort of, it's not, designed to secretly do this, to secretly do that. It's designed literally to serve in, in as efficient a way possible. Yeah. Which is, I think that must no, be a bit of a treat for, for, for an engineer or a programmer. I think that must be lovely. Yeah, it's porn. It's that, absolutely pure... engineering porn. Wow. Um, there's no, any, look. If you, which is great because we've got all these great yeah. minds then sort of doing stuff which is, uh, is, is there a chance, though, that this can end up where sort of all of the, the, the techies and the really good programmers form a sort of technocratic elite and everyone else is, you know, everything's running off algorithms and everything's running off, uh, you know, these, these networks and we're all like, oh my God, if they well, stop doing this, we're in a lot of trouble. Yeah, well, you're living in that now. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So we're in that. We are the technocratic elite, except that's it's true. not really engineers you're hearing from. It's, that's true. Again, it's from the corporation. So our... What we contribute to the world at this stage in history is absolutely critical. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's everything. We're, we're, hand, we're the people who can manipulate the world's, the, our species and history's most powerful tool. No matter what you're doing, you're going to need computing technology to handle it at this point. Yeah. You know, uh, we're there already. We're yeah, already. There, are, there, are, there are other, obviously there are other parts to this. You've got the, the biochemical world. You've got, there are many other types. I, I don't get me wrong, but, you know, Computing technology assists all of them as well. I mean, you're not you're going to see an advanced uh, uh, lab without computers in it. So yeah. we're everywhere. Yeah. Um, and of course, we will automate ourselves out of a job next. We will, you know, you can replace us with computers as well. We will replace ourselves. So the, the ultimate job of should be of any en of any software engineer is to make themselves unemployed. You know, if yeah. you're if you're not doing that, but then we move on to the next thing. It's you know that's what we want to do anyway. We don't want to stick forever on one thing. We want to get it right. Move on. And now that the, this idea of our systems all working with each other rather than fighting each other, because that's another thing, whenever you build for a corporation, you lock it all down. It's not, not allowed to talk to other systems. You yeah. know, they'll deliberately tell you, don't put that in because then we're going to lose all our audience to that. It's all about capturing and holding and locking people in rather than uh, providing something so beneficial to them that they can't leave because they want to stay. You know, not they, yeah. they can't leave because they're not allowed to, but they just, they really love it. And they always have other options, but these, this is the best option for them. And again, everyone's, everyone's solution is different. Everyone needs a different solution, you know? So, but yeah, with the electrical grid, uh, the, the truth of it is that the software that will run in those little units is yeah. going to be very open, very transparent, complete 
access to it for for the purpose of transparency, security, and trust. And I mean, if no one owns it, and it's not making profit for a central person as such, you know, it sort of does generate profit, but for the community that's using it directly, the users who are using it, then I'd imagine if this piece of software works really well, would it be that anyone else in any other part of the world or any other community could just use that? Would you sell it to them or, or can they just use it? How, how does, I mean, obviously that's stuff that has to be thought about, but I'd imagine, well, if it's open that's source, beautiful, you know. Yeah, if it's open source, it's there's no. So they can just see it and use it. And technically, there is a difference between open source and free software, and I prefer free software. Okay. But that might be a touch idealistic for yeah, the initial yeah. okay, stages. Okay. We will okay. get there, okay. where people are doing this for love. Yes. People are doing this because they bloody well yes. love it, and there's yes. nothing you could pay me nothing as long as I can eat, drink, and you know, yeah, move around. Yeah, I've got some, yeah. I would be doing just this, and I'm just one of millions who just feel for that the way. Kind of love of creating something very efficient and yeah. watching it work. People go to full time jobs, and then after their job, when they're exhausted, go home and like help with like the yeah. Linux, yeah. you know, stack or whatever. Yeah, people yeah. used to build, you know, spend all their time converting three rooms into a massive scale train set. Do you know what I mean? People just like to build things which are beautiful and detailed. And yeah. work well for the joy of it yeah i've seen so many of those people i think wow those people you know i start to believe that there will be people who can actually build this so this system right we've got our, our, our 200 houses we're back we've got the other village there's no part of this which at the moment why couldn't we do this before why why has this ah. never been done what what what's possible now that that wasn't there 15 years ago, 20 years ago. Distributed ever. decentralized technologies. So, so that's a new thing. That's, that's generally blo new. Blockchain wasn't... Look, the blockchain was a result of a number of things that had happened before it. Yeah. Uh, but the blockchain itself was a moment where... Like, for instance, James Watt took, created the steam engine, I believe. Yeah. And there were steam engine type things before then, but the way he did it, the way he remixed it, yeah. I mean, added a few things and got it together, created the Industrial Revolution. It, it required that one invention to go boom. The blockchain was that invention. So that's, that is a genuinely yeah. new thing. Yeah. So I mean, the, 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 yes. the point where it's a mixture of other things that yes. previously happened, yes. people have been working on it for ages, I think since the 90s or even the 80s. It was known, and the, the internet is the first decentralized yeah, technology, yeah. but the blockchain allowed for a distributed kind of database, and it's still not there yet. It's still not what we need. We've yeah. got more work to do. But it's, it's a it's, huge it's, piece. It's, yeah, missing it's, puzzle it's, piece. It's, it's, it's a huge piece. And Lord. so now, because of that, what we can do, and then, of course, uh, Vitalik came along and, and put the, you know, the, the, the virtual machine kind of distributed computing Smart power. contracts, I hear about that. Is that yeah, but it's the Ethereum virtual machine. It's okay. this idea that once it, I mean, it's a natural evolution cool. and you know and that's another example great mind comes along just does it yeah um and you know there's more to come much more to come there's there's ipfs which allows uh, the distribution of content uh, much mm -hmm. the same way sort of like a, a bit torrent without the centralized tracker yeah. thing anyway that's getting too technical but um, there's many of these and there's more to come. This is really at the beginning. We're looking at like, you know, when they had the Ford Model T, with like, it's not a Formula One car that we have today or, or the wonderful, you know, Tesla. Yeah. But it's a car and it will run and it's combustion. Car. Yeah, but it, again, it won't solve the problem. You wouldn't be able to run the world with Ford Model yeah, Ts. Yeah, it would, yeah. you know, fall apart. But, um, so but this stuff's new. We've, we've literally yeah. got a chance here to build systems like this that you're talking about, the electrical system, which we, we haven't been able to build this before. Yeah. That's amazing. So yeah. we live in quite an exciting time. Really. We are living at the at the era, at the beginning of the era of of digital trust. This is this is this is amazing. Digital trust is is everything. It's mathematics rather than people. You don't you can like we talk about this in that other thing. But you can trust. You know, I can have a relationship with you. I mean, obviously, I can with you. You're my brother. But yeah. I can have a relationship with friends, and I can ex because I've got enough uh, information on them because I know them. I can you know can make my choice with, as whether to trust them or not and I would advise that people learn to trust yeah. you know but it, sometimes it lets you down but you, you've got a way to do that the second it goes beyond your immediate friends or a little bit further than that you just can't be sure anyone's telling the truth and you can't be sure what their agenda is you don't know the people on TV you know you've got this whole situation where um, trust breaks down at large scale and that's what we live in right now so this era of digital trust allows technologies to step in at that point and we can create situations where I can work with somebody but not have to know everything about them because I've got, you know, like we do now, yeah. you can see someone's reputation, but then it's preserving their privacy while it does that. You can see what history they've had, what actions they've done, 
but we now know that those actions had to be verified to be there. They're not just, you know, somebody could have had a website and deleted all the bad reviews and just left the good ones. No, we can now be sure that the, the history is accurate. That actually, somebody said it, it's one of the, it's the first way of, we've ever had as a species of document, documenting things that have happened in time. Yes. Like we never had a way because before we put it in a database or we'd write a book and you never know if that book was real. You never know if that database has been modified. You can't tell when something really happened and if it really happened. Now with the blockchain, because it's spread out because of the way it works, we can describe that in another video. Uh, you know, you, you actually can be sure that something has happened in time. And that's not a little thing. That's trust. That's real trust. And it's, how, it's guaranteed through mathematics. How does that help though with this? Like for instance, the mesh, because well, every time I hear about the blockchain, it's about like cryptos and it's about like, you know, Bitcoin or some sort of cryptocurrency. How is it that these things are of, so this, this blockchain, which we hear about, but always with cryptos, this is also enabling all these other ideas, like the decentralized uh, electricity grid and stuff. It's somehow also it's going to enable many things other than just rather than just cryptocurrencies. When we talk about the electrical grid, uh, the first problem we have is the, the money. Um, tiny, 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 tiny microscopic transactions going backwards and forwards is the real way to do this. So you're measuring at a very high resolution. Now, at the beginning, it might start in hourly blocks or you know to, to reduce the load on these uh, original networks. But you mean hourly blocks of electricity? Oh, sorry, yeah. Um, so how do you meter it? How you measure what's going in and out yeah. has to be done and, and it can cause a strain on a, these blockchains while they're immature. Um, then you've got a problem of the blockchains themselves being quite centralized at this point. You have this one chain for the whole planet. That's ridiculous. Has to, and there's solutions growing for that. But essentially, if we had to use regular money right now, it would cause all sorts of problems. We wouldn't be allowed to do it. There'd be uh, restrictions on how we can use it. There's no way it's possible. Um, Plus, you want you might be able to into the actual currency for you know have a currency for electricity. Actually, wire in things that are directly linked to the electricity. It's a little bit difficult to explain, but there are other parts of this that we want to know for sure that certain things have happened, and the only way to do it is through digital currencies. So. It, okay, that goes over my head a bit. I get, I get a bit lost when you yeah. say that. I get lost. Let's, I sort of have like the inkling of like what you might be meaning there. Yeah. But I wish yeah. I think, you know, but I get I, sort of lost at, at the scale of how you guys are looking at this. Because obviously yeah. you can see the bigger picture of what's technologically possible, which at the moment, yeah. you know, it's hard for me to To be see. honest with you, that's my mistake because I want to get into like a huge discussion yeah, yeah, about yeah. that part. But probably better to do a white paper on that or write or do yeah. a separate talk with... But it's interesting. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. I think everyone's really interested in this. It's just, it's, it's such a beautiful overall picture that we think, and the fact that it's possible now, I, I, I didn't realize, you know, what a big missing piece to a puzzle um, uh, the blockchain was and how there are people who have been looking at this, creating decentralized things for a great many years. Yeah. And then when it sort of came about, you know, and Satoshi, whoever he is, sort of came and they saw the white paper of the blockchain, they sort of went, oh my God. Yeah, this was like an oh, amazing nice. moment for a whole community of developers yeah. who then started turning their mind to uh, electricity grids. And uh, as you were saying, like insurance or, I don't know, taxi steps or whatever, anything. I think that's that's uh, unbelievable. Yeah, I didn't realize it, was, it was so big. It was massive. It was like a big blinding light in, our, in a lot of people's world. I mean, like it set off a whole chain reaction of people who are hoddling right now. Yes. Uh, and, you know, you've got that original group of people and they may some of them not even programmers just just people who understood what it meant um others mathematicians other just people from all walks of life it wasn't sp specifically any one group of people and they saw what it meant and that was it and boom just light light for the first time and that that's why we got so excited that's why in that video i'm trying to point out how big a deal this is because it is something real it's not you don't trust me you don't trust anyone else you trust a community and it's it's a wonderful change again the blockchain allows us to to create databases for these marketplaces to create um all the contracts that will need to be you know going between the computers and yeah. it does that all it's so perfect because it's automated you have anyone involved in that so it can happen like millions of times a second wow. in, in computers minds and it, since it all starts from the individual the house you know, it, it, it's scalable infinitely because you know, as long as your computer can communicate with and get what it needs done, it doesn't care what's happening in Timbuktu or, you know, Germany or Afghanistan or America or, or Japan. It, it's just, you, everything's local. So you have this incredible power and it can scale to planet size, you know, levels. 
and it works just well. It doesn't matter what's happening over there as long as you've got your own world and it works in its own way. And you can program in layers to, to deal with the maintenance of that network. Yeah. You can program in layers and funding what from, from all the participants. Yeah. They can sort of agree to automatically set a certain amount to go to so maintenance to, to maybe keep the developers in, you know, team as, biscuits. And, yeah, you know. as many... As many ways as there are ideas uh, and that's what engineering is all about so it won't be me who answers that question it'll be various communities around the world it may work well for one person in one way because you know they have a particular situation governmentally that allows them to do this and not that yeah. and another place has different requirements so it's, it's it's everywhere this is not about again we keep saying this not about any one person or any one idea it's about the idea of the transfer of power from hyper-centralized authorities in terms of institutions or whatever, back to the individual, the person who should be making the decision ultimately. Yeah. Because, you know, I I am okay uh, with, I'm okay with sharing with my neighbors and my neighbors are okay with sharing with me probably because it benefits us both. It's not about being nice, it's really in our benefit. Yeah, Again, it's an efficient system. It's super it? efficient. And the prices change very dramatically yeah. when that's happening, you know stuff's coming out of the sky and you know the sea and the air and the the everything's powering creating just, yeah. power it's amazing i just didn't know this stuff was possible i didn't know because i thought well if we could do that surely we would have done it i didn't realize everyone was waiting for this missing bit and that now that they found it like you know well, everyone's just off and running sort of creating creating this stuff the, the missing bit really was big because the blockchain solved that problem it, it, we couldn't for instance right so if we had made a database for this yeah then to do this, to run this network. You need a database always. In other words, a place to store the information okay. for any kind of project or system, right? Okay. If we did it like that, we would have to then trust the people who run that database. Yeah. If you're centralized. Yeah, who runs right? it? Are they who turn runs it? Off? They, yeah, exactly. They don't like you to turn it off or it's not uh, working or because it's a one big database, somebody needs to update yeah, it. They, they sell it to a company or they bring in some sort of outside interest. They ordinarily work out how they can make a little more money for themselves yeah. and, that, and that increases and then they get used to yeah. it and then we get used to it and then we expect it and then we think, oh, well, that's just yeah. the way it works. That's where we are right now. Yeah. But it, it isn't the way it works. It doesn't have to be like that. So... Um, that's what the blockchain is. It's a d database that just exists, exists in the computers of the participants. No, everyone has equal opportunity, equal uh, merit within that system, equal uh, access to that system. And it's owned by the users. Yeah, well, it's owned by, it is the user's network. It's, a, it's like a lot of people talking to each other. Incredible, it's very, it's very hard to get my head around. It's, it's like saying, who owns, by... who owns a conversation? That's all it is. It's a conversation between computers. Who owns it? You can have people who organize it, but if the people in that conversation don't like the organizer, they'll go and have the conversation with someone else. And that's how this works. So you can still have, again, you can still have authorities. You can still have yeah. leaders and guides and businesses Delegated and everything and people, delegate. Yeah. But it just won't grow so large and become cover up so many things because if it does, it will lose efficiency. And it doesn't have a constant outside interest of we need to make money off all the participants, all of the users. Yeah. It's incredible. Yeah, it's the it's the, how the future is. It's the, this is the future. It's going this way. It goes this way because it works, not because we're all happy and nerdy and hippie and that's whatever. the feeling I get from it. Is that when I when I read about it, it's just like, well, that's the sort of the, the thing we have now, but with some of the real major glaring problems gone, and in a way which is much more kind of human, much more humane. Well, it's humane because it's based on the idea of the individual's needs, and the individual's needs really largely are <laughs> humanity's needs. Um, so we call it humane, but what we're just saying is more efficient, less crap. Yeah. It's all it is. It's just like you can have exactly the same world. We could have exactly the same world we have now. We just eliminate all the things that are not working. We'll eliminate all the bits that are pulling resources where they shouldn't be pulling. Um, the real question is about funding and how we get from here to fund these things. We touched a bit about on a bit on on that a bit, but. Um, that's a big deal. That will have to be worked out. We don't have all the answers. Yeah. We have models for how it can work. We have uh, patronage. We have benevolence right now. Yeah. There are certain people, and I, we, we urge them all the time, if you have money and you want to see this happen, it's pennies for rich, super rich people. It's yeah. pennies to spend. Like, you, you know, give 200,000, a quarter of a million, which seems like a lot to the average citizen, but to many people with money, that's, you know, not that impossible. That could fund, like, God knows how many, you know, programs, projects. projects to get things done. Because again, there's no real overhead. It's a bunch of, you know, computer programs working together to get to get something done. 
Um, I think we're more people, I think, and we can crowdsource that as well. Yeah. We can kickstart things. We can, there's going to be ways that we transfer uh, wealth from our current economy to the projects that need to happen as the base projects. We need to sort of, there needs to be a bit more cooperation between some of the blockchains. It needs to be broken up where you can, you know, mix and match and we'll, get, we'll start creating a blockchain kind of stack. And people have done this already. There are great projects out there doing this. These things will continue. Foundations will spring up to support these ideas. And then there's got to be a lot of discussion. There's got to be more of these videos because there's no point all the nerds knowing what's going on. And then people are like, well, I don't care. Well, that's the thing. I didn't, I didn't know what this was. I've heard about decentralization. I've heard about like cryptos and I've been around that stuff. But like really when I, when I started reading your book and hearing the ideas of what it can actually do, it became a much, I, I suddenly I had more enthusiasm because it's a very obviously kind of good idea. It's very practical, very simple. It's very obvious, I think, that the more I've read about it and the more I've sort of looked into it, I, I naturally become enthusiastic. I naturally think, yeah, that's a good idea. Is that possible? It's more amazement, really. Like, is this possible when we do this? Yeah. yeah. Well, we, we felt exactly the same way. Yeah. I mean, I did. I know others did. Uh, it was a big, big, uh, big moment in our little sort of community, <laughs> which is now huge. But, um, and that's, I think, why a lot of us feel very disturbed by the appearance of this kind of this blockchain fad stuff and these kind oh, of ah, meh, meh. the underlying power or, or, or greatness of some of these ideas is it's i think a lot last outlast the fads i don't hear people talking about this stuff really so it's yeah. it's kind of pleasure to to look at it and discuss it and think so that's it cool that's a wrap